All right, welcome back, Pre-Calc. Uh, today we are covering our last section for Unit 9. It's going to be 9-6, complex plane and polar form of complex numbers. Admittedly, this is the most difficult section in this chapter, but we'll try to break it down for you and uh, give you some chunks here that you can use piece by piece. So uh, our goal today, we're going to graph complex numbers on the complex plane. We're going to show you the difference between that and the Cartesian plane which is our X, Y, now we're going to have A in uh, B, I. And then we'll convert those complex numbers from rectangular form, what we're used to, to polar form and vice versa. So with that said, we'll jump right into it. So normal coordinate plane, we've got our X and Y coordinate system, so X here and Y here. On the complex plane, we have our real number, our A number, on the what would be the X axis, and the imaginary number, or the B number, on the y-axis. And so what you can see here, if we have 4 plus 3i, the a and b for that is really 4 and 3. So that's the real and imaginary. So we would graph this the same as the point 4, 3. Uh, this point here, 4 minus 3i, kind of color code these for you. So you can see this would be 4 on the real and negative 3 on the imaginary. And then the last two, you can see them here, negative 4 plus 3i, um, that's going to be 4 to the left on the real, or negative 4, and then up 3 on the imaginary, and negative 4 minus 3i, 4 to the left, down 3. So again, we graph these just like we would on the Cartesian coordinate plane, only instead of x and y, we have our a and b number. To find the absolute value of a complex number, uh, very similar to doing the um, Pythagorean theorem here, where we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Same idea. We're going to take a and b from our complex number, square those, take the square root. That'll give us z. That's basically the distance um, from 0 here to each point is what that z value represents. So if we look here, we've got the point 3 plus 2i or 3, 2, which would be right there. Let me throw that one in there real quick. All right, so 3, 2, we're looking at a point right there. So z, that's going to give us a distance from 0, 0 to that point. So we square our a value, 3 squared, square the b value, just the real part of that. So 2 squared, so 9 plus 4, square root of 13. So again, that z represents the distance from the origin to your point, regardless of what quadrant it's in. Same idea here, 0 plus 4i. So if we did that, that point, and again, I'll throw that in there real quick, um, that point is going to be on our imaginary axis. And so I'll move that real quick. 0, 4 is going to be right there. And so our a value is 0. So 0 squared plus 4 squared, square root of 16. Our distance there is 4, and we can see that. All right, this page here, uh, a little complicated. So th this is getting to polar form of a complex number. So we have our, our A and B here, our A and BI, and we're trying to get it to R theta. Here's what we know. We know that A, our X value, is R cosine theta, and B, our Y value, is R sine theta. So if you remember earlier in the chapter, X was R cosine theta, Y was R sine theta. We're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to plug those in. And we know that z is a plus bi. So we put our cosine in for a, we put our sine in for b, and what this simplifies down to, so this is known as polar form right here. So r times cosine theta i sine of theta. We can write it this way, but to simplify it down, we shorten this as cis. So cosine i sine theta is what that means. So r cis theta. So that this is how we write z in polar form for a complex number. This is the abbreviated form, and that's typically what we'll use uh, in class. So again, how do we get that? We know from earlier in the chapter x was r cosine theta. We do the same thing for a, and we know that b was r sine theta, or y was r sine theta, so we do the same thing for b. And when we substitute them in here, factor the r out, uh, we get to this point right here. So again, we simplify this down, abbreviate this as CIS instead of writing cosine theta plus I sine theta. So now we want to get 
one with actual numbers here, say A and B, now we have numbers. We have negative 3 plus 4i, and we want to get um, to that polar form. We know that A is negative 3. We know that B is 4. First thing we can do, we can get our R value, which is just like getting Z, if you will. We can square A and B, take the square root. So three, negative 3 squared, 4 squared, we get 25. Take the square root of that, so our R value is 5, just like we would find Z. To get theta, we're going to do inverse tangent. Normally we do Y over X, this time we're going to do B over A. So when I do inverse tangent of this number here, I get negative 0.927. And hopefully you saw my little note here. Make sure when you're doing these, theta is in radians, not in degrees. Decimal's perfect. So now we got R, we got theta. Now we can write this. So we know that theta here. We're going to have to add pi. Again, why do we have to add pi to that? So we were given a negative value, which would be down here. But we know we're actually in quadrant two so I've got to add pi I go halfway around the circle there so that's why I added 3.14 to this number so theta is 2.21 and now that I have theta and r right here I can write it in the proper form now again here's the long way if you want to do it that way um, I don't recommend that you can certainly do that if you'd like uh, I think you're better off just 5 cis 2.21 so you take your r value Put in CIS, put your theta value right there, and you're done. So again, how do we get R? We square A and B, take the square root. Theta, we do inverse tangent. Make sure you check the value that you get in your calculator versus where your point is on the graph. Here we got a negative, which was down here, but I had to add pi because we were in quadrant 2. Remember, you take theta on your calculator, tangent, it would, theta, it will always give you a value either in quadrant one or quadrant four. So just be mindful of that. All right, another idea, similar problem. Uh, now we have A is one and B is square root of three, so that's fine. So we'll square those again to find R. So the square root of three squared is three. So one plus three square root of four. So R is two. We'll take our inverse tangent, and if you got an exact value, use pi over 3. But if we did in a calculator, which is the way most of us would do that, uh, inverse tangent of square root of 3 is going to give us 1.05. That's perfect. Positive A, positive B, that tells me we're in quadrant 1. That tells me that this value is perfect as is. We don't need to add anything to that. Um, again, if you recognize this exact value, great, but most of us aren't going to do that. Most of us are going to do this right here. We're going to get our R value of 2. We're going to use the decimal value for theta. Perfect. So 2 CIS 1.05. Again, if, if you did the uh, exact value, you use pi over 3. But 99.5% of us are going to go right here, including your teacher. So use the decimal version. That's great. Okay, now we're going to work back the other way. So we're going to go from polar back to rectangular. And so in this equation, you can see it's already in the CIS form. If we simplify this down, 4 CIS, 11 pi over 6. So I have R, I have theta. And so now if I have R and theta, I can work backwards. And we know this. We know that our A value, it's just like finding X, is R cosine theta. And our B value is going to be R sine theta. And so look, cosine 11 pi over 6, if you got that from your trig chart, this here. Otherwise, you can use the decimal version. That's fine. And then when we do B, same idea. We are going to do 4 I sine 11 pi over 6. So don't forget the I here when you do B. Sine 11 pi over 6, if you type in your calculator, it's going to be negative 1 half. Or you can get it from your unit circle. So this is negative 2I. And again, if, if we went exact value, here you go. Most of us are going to use the decimal, so instead of 2 squared to 3, we would have figured that out as 3.46 of the calculator. That's great. So 3.46 minus 2i. Again, just to retract, how do we do that? From this form, we get r and theta. To find a, you take 4r cosine theta. To find b, you're going to do r times i times sine of theta. And 
get down to our answer. You don't have to graph it. That's just a visual to show us where we're at. So this lets me know that I was in down here in the fourth quadrant. So I know I'm going to have a positive A value and a negative B value. All right, last two examples here. Uh, we have these equations. You can see we've got real numbers and imaginaries here. So you can see I got an I term on the left side, and I've got two terms with I on the right side. To do this, we're going to set this up like a system of equations. Real numbers in one equation, imaginaries in the other. So I'm going to take 2x plus y equal to 9. That's my real numbers. And 3i equal to xi minus y. There's my imaginaries. So now I have a system of equations, and now I can tackle this. So first thing I would do here. I'm going to work this one first and work back, but I would factor an i out of this first equation like so. And over here, so now I know this. Um, if I factor out the i, and then I can divide that out really if I want to. So if I divide by i, I know that 3 equals x minus, x minus y. So now I have this equation. By factoring i out and dividing by i, I have this equation in terms of x and y, which I in turn put over here. So now I have this real equation, this real equation here. Notice the y's cancel out, so I can solve for x. So x in this case is going to be 4, and then I can plug 4 back in over here and solve for y, and y is going to be negative y is going to be negative 1, so then y is positive 1, and now I have x and y for this system of equations. So again, just a, a brief recap. Set the real numbers equal to the real numbers. Set the imaginaries equal to the imaginaries. Factor i out. Divide out i. Now I've got two real equations in terms of x and y. Solve this like you would a system. Once you solve for x or y, then you plug it back in to the other one. Don't forget your ordered pair. Uh, I'll do one more of these and it will be done for the day. So again, you can see we have two real numbers, two imaginary, so I'm going to separate those out. And it's going to be a, a little bit easier as far as steps here. We can solve for x right away. I just have to divide by 2, and I know that x is going to be 6. Here I can divide by i, and I will get to negative 5y equals 15. And then if I divide, y is negative 3. And in our last step again is to write those as an ordered pair. So I'll add that part in here last. So x was 6, y was negative 3, and that's the answer to our system. So that wraps up your notes for today for uh, for section 9.6. If you got any questions, again, let me know. Don't forget about the help sessions this week, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks a lot.